This section is about the human nervous system. This section covers the reflex arc, the eye, and defects of vision. First, the reflex arc. The nervous system works like an internal communication system. It uses our senses to detect stimuli from our environment, such as light, heat, sound, smell, taste or gravity. Most of these stimuli are then transmitted to the brain. In the brain, the stimuli are translated into messages to other parts of our body. But not all the nervous system works that way. Reflexes are responses in our bodies which happen automatically without a stimulus being sent by the brain. This process is called a reflex arc. Examples of reflexes are pulling your hand away from something painful, the way your knee jerks when it's hit lightly on the tendon below the knee, and changing the size of the pupil in your eye in bright light. This clip looked at some reflexes. When we're alive, our eyes respond to light, even when we're unconscious. The pupil doesn't change size if the brain is dead. The blink reflex is another indication of life, but some of our other senses are much more difficult to test. Although we can't test hearing in an unconscious patient, the same nerve serves the sense of balance. And this can be tested by bathing the ear with ice cold water to see whether the eyes move. We can sense touch by pressing on the fingers and the toes. The sense of taste also can't be tested in someone who is unable to speak, but we can touch the tongue and around the mouth to see if the patient swallows or tries to gag. We also examine whether or not the patient is able to take independent breath. But how does the reflex arc work? If you touch a hot plate, receptors in your fingers sense the heat. The stimulus goes along a sensory neuron as an electrical impulse to the central nervous system in the spinal cord. There, the signal passes from the sensory neuron to a relay neuron, across a junction called a synapse, using chemicals called neurotransmitters. The relay neuron passes the impulse on to a motor neuron, and the motor neuron carries the impulse to an effector, such as a muscle which takes action and moves your hand. Remember, all this happens very quickly. It's quite automatic and no decision making is involved because the reflex arc does not involve the brain. To summarize the reflex arc, sense organs detect stimulus. Impulse carried along sensory neuron, which passes from sensory neuron via relay neuron to motor neuron. Motor neuron carries the impulse to effector muscle. Effector muscle then takes action. Remember, all this happens very quickly. It's automatic and no decision making is involved. The next section is about the human eye. The eye is one of our most important sense organs. It's sensitive to light and allows us to see. How does it work? As you watch the next clip, see how each part of the eye responds to light. At the front of the eye is the cornea. It's clear like a window. Behind the cornea sits the iris, a round disc that blocks light, except for a hole in the middle called the pupil. The pupil controls how much light comes into the eye. Next is the lens. It's clear like the cornea, but its shape can change. Because the lens can change shape, it can focus light from objects both near and far away. The light ends up projected onto the retina, a light-sensitive layer of cells at the back of the eye. When the lens is relaxed, it's thin and flat. This brings the light from distant objects into focus on the retina. But when the muscles around the lens contract, the lens becomes fatter and brings the light from close objects into focus. The lens accommodates the changes of focus from close to distant objects by relaxing 
and contracting to alter its shape. This is why it's called accommodation. The retina that covers the back of our eyes is made from a layer of cells that are sensitive to light. So the retina is a bit like the film in a camera. The lens projects an upside down image onto the retina and the light sensitive cells convert each patch of it into an electrical signal. Nerves carry that signal to our brains, but their wiring is arranged so that we see the world right way up. Let's summarize. The iris is the colored part of the eye. The pupil is the hole in the iris, which lets light into the eye. The muscles in the iris control the amount of light entering the eye by changing the size of the pupil. Light then passes into the eye through the clear lens. The shape of the lens is controlled by the ciliary muscles. The lens focuses light onto the retina. The retina is a light sensitive layer lining the back of the eye. The retina changes the light image focused on it into nerve impulses. The nerve impulses go to the brain to be translated into what we see. Now we'll look at some defects of vision. Imagine this glass bowl is the eyeball. There's a lens at the front and water with green dye shows the path of the light rays. When a normal eye looks at a point of light, like a candle, the lens bends light rays so they converge and we see clear, sharp images. But for some people, the lens doesn't match the size of the eye. Sometimes the light rays focus short of the retina, like this, making a blur. This is called short-sightedness. In other people, the light rays don't converge at all. This is called long-sightedness. To focus properly like this, short or long-sighted eyes need some outside help, spectacles or contact lenses. The extra lens moves the point where the light rays converge, back to fix short sight and forward to fix long sight. So people with short sight can see close objects clearly because the lens can focus a clear image on the retina. They can't see distant objects clearly because their lens can't focus the light onto the retina. The clear image falls short. Short sight is corrected by using a concave lens in glasses or contact lenses. That moves a clear image back so it focuses on the retina. People with long sight can see distant objects clearly because their lens can focus a clear image on the retina. They can't see close objects clearly because their lens can't focus the light onto the retina. The clear image falls behind it. Long sight is corrected by using a convex lens in glasses or contact lenses to move the clear image forward so it focuses on the retina. That's the end of this section on the human nervous system.